Do you need to copy files from a machine running Linux over to a machine running Windows? Well, I'm Don Pizzette, edutainer at IT Pro TV, and in this Linux how-to, I'm going to show you how to do it. Copying files from a Linux machine over to a Windows machine can actually be a little bit tricky because the two don't really speak the same language. But most Linux distros have gone the extra mile to make that compatibility a heck of a lot easier by including support for a protocol called SMB, Server Message Block. In Linux, that's done with a service called Samba, and it's usually installed and operational right out of the box. Let me show you how we can make use of it. The first thing I want to do is I want to create a file share on my Windows machine. So here on my Windows machine, for example, I'm going to browse to my hard drive. And on my C drive, I have a folder called ISOs. And I want to share that out on my network so that people can access ISO files. So I'll right click on that folder and then look for the Give Access To option. And under Give Access To, I'll choose specific people and then I can pick who I want to share it out to and what permissions they want to have. Now, I can't change my permissions because I'm the owner, but if I added other users in here, I could set them as read-only or, or so on. Once that's done, I can share the folder, and now it's available on the network. Notice the showing here is being called slash slash Don's laptop slash ISOs, right? Uh, it's also accessible by the IP address, which is usually a little more reliable than using the host name. So I'm going to grab my IP address real quick, and an easy way to do that is to go to the command line. I'm just going to bring up my start menu and type CMD, and in the command line I will type IP config to get my IP address configuration. And I'm going to grab the IP address for the very first adapter in the list. So mine is 10.0.222.223. That's the address that I want. That's going to help me get connected. Now I'm going to jump over to my Linux system. On the Linux system, I'm going to connect to that folder over on Windows. And once I'm there, I can copy files from Linux over to Windows or vice versa. I'll have that communication in place. I start by going to my file explorer. Inside of the file navigation window here, you'll see where it's highlighting a lot of local resources. I see my home directory, my downloads folders, and so on. But there's a neat little option down here that says Other Locations. If you click on Other Locations, it will scan your network and look for other network resources. And I haven't done any special configuration here, but you'll see where it's found a number of Macs that are on our network. It's finding network, uh, network storage appliances. It's finding all sorts of crazy things on the network. If your machine shows up in the list, you can double click on it, authenticate, and you're in. But there's plenty of times where Windows doesn't show up here in the list, especially if uh, network discovery is turned off, which it is by default in some networks. So in that case, I'm going to have to tell the Linux box where to go. And that's where this box down at the bottom comes in. See where it says connect to server? Well, my laptop isn't a server, but it's all treated the same on the network side. So I just need to tell it where my laptop is. And from here, I can type smb colon slash slash. Think like the URL in a web browser, HTTP colon slash slash. Here it's SMB for server message block. And then I can put the host name of my laptop. Mine is called Don's-Laptop. Or I could put the IP address. I'm going to go with the IP address because it is a little more reliable than a domain name. Right? Now, if I stop there, when I connect, it's going to let me pick which folder I want to access. Or if I know the folder's name, I could just type it outright. Mine is called ISOs. Then I can go ahead and click the connect button. When I go to connect, it's going to ask me to authenticate. You can set it up for an anonymous access, but that's not very secure. So the default is you need to be a registered user with an account on that system. So now I'm going to provide my user credentials for that system. My username is Don Pazet. Uh, my domain, well, I'm not in a domain. If I had an Active Directory domain, I would put its name here. Most workstations default to workgroup, or you could put the laptop's name in there, you know, or desktop, whatever it is. Uh, this value is really not going to get used. And then lastly, what my password is, so I'll punch that in. Uh, hopefully, I can type it correctly. And then whether or not I want to remember the password just until I log out forever, or just immediately forget the password after this initial connection is up to me. Assuming you get that information right, you can hit connect and it's going to reach out to that server. And I can see that mine has connected to the ISOs folder on my laptop, and I can see the ISO images that are available, right? So if I wanted to copy those here to Linux, I could do that. But 
the reverse is true as well. I can copy files from Linux over to my Windows machine. I'm going to grab a PDF file that I have right here on my machine. Let me go into my Documents folder, and here's this PDF. And I'm going to just copy that. And then when I jump over here to the, the, the remote folder, I see all those ISO files, and I'm just going to right-click and choose Paste. And right there, I see that PDF just copied over, so now it's in that folder. If I were to jump back over to my Windows machine, let's go and navigate over to that folder, I should see a new PDF in my ISOs folder messing up my organization. Uh, so when I come in here, I should be able to find it right there, Linux in a nutshell, waiting for me, copied over. So I just successfully copied a file from my Linux workstation right over to my Windows station by using SMB all built into the Linux distro by default. Thanks for watching this Linux how-to video. Check out the playlist below for more Linux videos. And don't forget to subscribe to the IT Pro TV YouTube channel.